Hey guys, I'm super excited because today we're gonna talk about the first device from Elite series from Sonoff. And I've got Sonoff TH Elite Switch, which actually looks pretty cool. I really like what they're doing with the new design line. It looks more professional and it's DIN rail compatible, which is always a plus. Actually, I just realized that I never covered previous TH series devices from Sonoff. It's probably because I never had the opportunity, even though I do have one of these somewhere behind me. I realized that they are quite popular with community because you can use the temperature sensor that connects to that unit to control either the water, heaters, etc. But ever since I've hacked DHT11 into my Sonoff Basic and I use that for my DIY home heating for $5, I kind of never felt need for it. If you're interested in that DIY heating, by the way, this is the video for you. But today I'm fixing this mistake and we are talking about some of TH Elite. Now, the Elite series, as you could probably tell, is dominated by two things. An overall redesign with a massive LCD display in front and the fact that they come with extra internal changes, which we're going to discuss as well. I know IT had named it Elite, but don't be afraid. Those actually Elite devices don't come with Elite pricing. Uh, TH devices come with two flavors, 16 amp for $16.99 and 20 amp for $19.99 US dollars, so they're not particularly expensive and they are very much in line with the previous TH series. The release of the TH series is also supported by new sensors which you'll be able to hook up to the new interface. That's right, there is a new interface on here, but that's in a moment. So you've got temperature and humidity sensor, very similar to what you've got in the past, but also you have a thermal probes, uh, probes for the soil humidity, and the ability to actually extend those now up to 60 meters. Yes, that's correct. You can have one of these at home and probe the temperature far, far away. Enough about what's an offer, let's actually take a closer look. Oh, I probably shouldn't have this one here. Sorry guys, we're going to talk about POW a little bit later. Excellent idea to subscribe to my channel if you want to see that. The new device is nice, spunking new. It's white and has a single button to interface with. Obviously, we have this big LCD display which displays temperature and humidity. Now, if you don't have a probe with humidity information that is being blanked out, but one of the things that I don't really like is the fact that there is no backlight, which means you can really read this temperature in a daylight. I mean, it's not a massive problem. You can always whip up your phone, access that information through e link up, and that way you can even read it online. But something tells me that if you're gonna be playing with any electrical installations, you probably want to have light in there, you know, just for your safety. Display isn't the only new thing. At the bottom, we have improved terminals. I actually really like them because some of the Sonoff devices, they had terrible push fit terminals in the past, but finally, I think Sonos realized what works and we have some decent terminals and we'll be able to connect proper wires to this single channel relay. On top of the device, you will find new stuff as well. First, we have RJ11, which is a, you know, landline telephone connector. Does anyone even use this landline nowadays? But anyway, this is how the sensors are connected now. If you already have sensors that use 3.5 millimeter jack to connect, don't be upset. Uh, Sonoff will hook you up with an adapter so you'll be able to plug those in. In fact, they've sent me two probes with those adapters and I was testing uh, the Sonoff TH uh, through the adapters itself. And lastly, we have this 3-pin connector. And this is new. This is a tri-contact, so it's additional relay, but it's not meant to be used with anything heavy. The limits on that is 30 volts and 1 amp. And this is working in line with the main channel relay, which means you can either use it in normally open or normally closed configuration, and you'll be able to switch over some heavy installations that are probably outside of the 20 amp specification from the Sonoff TH Elite. If you pay close attention to the front, you'll also find three icons with three LEDs. And my biggest complaint about this is that they are very, very dim, making them pretty much unreadable in a daylight. Before we're gonna get it connected, let's actually take a look inside and see what's what. Some have made it incredibly easy to actually access the device. There's no those complicated tabs, it's only four screws and you can get to the main PCB on which you're gonna find ESP32, which is also responsible for Bluetooth pairing. This means that, well, 
hacking it and flashing to smooth that's gonna happen sooner or later. Now I do have a 20 amp version and that is confirmed on the relay which is also rated for 20 amp and the most needed dev pads are exposed on the PCB via header so you'll be able to solder some pins and start hacking. Now we have RX, TX, VCC and ground and something tells me, I haven't tested it yet, that the GPL00 needed for flashing is still linked to the main button. We also have a couple of dev pads available near the IC responsible for driving the LCD on this thing. So we're probably gonna see Tasmota working with the LCD pretty soon. There are some clever people out there that's definitely gonna make it happen. Enough of this though, let's put it back together and pair it. As we know it's CSP32, which means we're gonna use Bluetooth pairing. And I love Bluetooth pairing because it's simple. Pretty much select the device, connect it, and you are done. On the device card itself, you have access to the information about the temperature and humidity, so you don't have to even open the device menu to control it. And there is a toggle for quick toggling. Once you access the device menu, you are greeted with two options, either manual or auto. Now, manual is a typical relay interface, and you know how it works. You're just gonna press it to toggle the relay. But in auto, you have a couple of options. You can set up up to eight policies based on either temperature or humidity to control when the relay is on and off. You'll be able to select the values either greater than or lower than and create your unique policies that's either gonna apply 24 seven, or you can also select schedules where those policies are being active. You can enable this mode directly from the app or by double clicking on the physical button on the device itself, which is also handy. Remember when I mentioned that the LEDs are very dim? Yeah, it's very hard to actually tell after double pressing whether that auto policy is in order, which is a bit annoying. What's even more annoying is the fact that if you have a policy enabled and you press on the button, it will change the status of your relay. You'll do that for only for a fraction of a second and then it will apply the policy again, but that might not be the behavior that you want. And it would be nice to have actually option to enable and disable that action so you don't accidentally ruin your day. The same goes for the app interface, which is slightly confusing because if you have an auto policies uh, enabled and you switch to manual screen, well, the auto policies are not getting disabled. You'll have to go back, disable them again, and then you'll be able to take a manual override. It might be a good thing or a bad thing, but it, I found it slightly annoying that it's not explained slightly better and I wish they eh, tweaked it a little bit and redesigned it so when you switch over to the manual mode, it will disable the active auto policy. On the very same screen, we also have standard e-willing controls, including loops, schedules and timers. But if you go to device settings, you'll get a couple of extra options that are pretty cool. First, in the push notifications, you can obviously create a notification when the relay is being toggled, but also set alarms for when the temperature is set to a certain threshold. That applies to temperature and humidity and enables you to receive a mobile notification when the temperature reaches that threshold, but the relay isn't activated just yet. So you can actually get notified before any action happens on the relay itself. On top of that, we have a very familiar LAN control, so you don't have to use the cloud to control the device, uh, default power on state, and engine settings. Anyone across the pond using different than metrics unit will be happy to know that you can switch over the units to Fahrenheit and receive that information also in Fahrenheit on the LCD display, so Ewilling has got you covered. There is one more thing I'd like to mention about smart assistants. Obviously, you have an integration with Ewilink app with Google Home and Alexa devices, and you can use voice commands to actually toggle the device state. But as a benefit, you can also read the temperature. So you can ask what is the temperature of your device and your voice assistant will let you know. Unfortunately, that doesn't work with humidity. So even if you have a probe with humidity readouts, well, you are out of luck. I guess it was time to hook it up to my test setup and see what it's like in action. Now, after initial setup, I've discovered that for a minute or two, I had some connectivity problems and I couldn't really toggle the relay, but that settled on and after that initial period, I had no problems. I don't know why, because there wasn't any uh, firmware update or anything waiting. It's just some little quirk. Now, the device will update the screen every five seconds, uh, so you will get fresh information from your probe. 
Now, in my uh, experience, uh, I think I got sent a dodgy probe because that probe uh, wasn't submitting the information constantly to me. I had instances when it would drop out and, well, skip the beat and didn't submit the temperature and humidity information. I confirmed that it's a probe issue, not the TH issue, because I've connected a second probe and I was submitting temperature information without any problem. So I think I'm out of luck with this little thing. One of the things that annoys me a little bit is the fact that even though the information about the temperature and humidity is submitted every five seconds, this is not what EWILink Cloud does. It gathers the information, averages last hour and keeps the log of the temperature in one hour installments, even though you have much greater resolution from the sun off. I don't know if they do it to kind of save up on space, but yeah, they could aggregate the data, data a little bit better and have it accessible uh, in uh, more frequent intervals for a short period of time so you have a better idea of what's going on. Unfortunately, it is what it is. Looking through the apps, I quickly discovered that we also don't have access to that dry contact. It synchronizes with the state of the internal relay, so you will always reflect that. And it will be up to you to decide whether you want it in a synchronous configuration or inverted, uh, depending on whether you're going to use the normally open or normally closed contacts. It would be nice to have a separate controls, but as far as that, this unit is concerned, it's a single channel relay, and this is what we stuck with. I think you know what's going to happen next. Sooner or later, I'm going to get that flashed with the Smota, and then I'll see how the Smota works on it and what are the options available. At this moment in time, I don't know if some of DIY is available on Elite Series. It would be really nice if that was available because, well, you could get away with not flashing one. But if you want to uh, have a video about me flashing the Smota, then you'll have to wait a bit. Now, if you're interested in Son of TH, then obviously in the description of this video, you're going to find all the information about it. And my next uh, video is going to be probably covering that POW that we've seen earlier on. So stay tuned for that as well. So do let me know in the comment section what do you think about the latest Elite series and what devices from Son of Lineup would you like to see in the Elite series? Uh, I have to say, I uh, kind of like it. I'm digging it, the new design and it brings it really, really close to what Shelly has on offer with uh, Shelly Dinware Montable uh, Relays. I'm gonna cover this one at some point as well, so yeah, I'm teasing you. But for now, I'm just going to tell you I do not have any uh, schedule, so if you're interested when the next video is gonna drop, well, you know how YouTube works, I'm not going to explain you all that. But I do have a couple of social media, follow me on any given media of your choice, and you're definitely gonna have a uh, heads up when the new video or new project is up. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.